This is Bumper to Bumper TV. Times and fortunes are smiling on the Chicago Auto Show. Now it's the first major automotive event of the year since the North American International Auto Show has been shifted until June. With the change, the second city is flexing its muscle as trucks and cars make their debut. Ford, which has been focused on trucks and SUVs recently, reminded the world they also play in the performance realm with the debut of a new version of the GT Supercar. Not a one-off show car. We call it the liquid carbon Ford GT and is one of the most exclusive Ford GTs. It comes from a very labor intensive and handcrafted process. Each car is made from a single batch of material to ensure that the carbon weave flows properly from one panel to the next. At the more affordable end of the scale in comparison is the new Jaguar F-Type. The open roadster has new lines and visual features that are reminiscent of the brand's past with the latest in handling and performance under the hood. And to demonstrate that, of course, Jaguar set up a Hot Wheels track. This was for more than show. The automaker is offering a grant of $50,000 to any college engineering team that can create a more challenging set of loops. The winner also gets recognition in the Guinness Book of World Records. However, the Chicago show has a long reputation where trucks and SUVs and vans are king, and this year they were well represented. Nissan presented the new Frontier, which has graduated to midsize status. The new model comes with a V6 engine, upgraded interior, and a raft of driver assistance technology. That sounds appealing to Chicago Courier driver Dan Murphy, who has put a million miles on his Frontier. I bought it in uh, June of 2007, brand new, and I use it for delivery work. I drive it all day, every day. To thank him for his loyalty, Nissan is giving Dan one of the first new trucks coming off of the assembly line for free. Anyone else will have to pay for theirs. Chrysler used the opportunity to show off two new versions of the Pacifica. One is an all-wheel drive version, and the other is a very upscale trim level called the Pinnacle. Meanwhile, the Ram division of the company is recasting the Rebel pickup into an off-the-grid vehicle for the folks who really, really want to get away from it all and go overland. Overlanding is ex exploding in popularity right now. So. Um, this truck again is a concept, so it, the truck itself you can buy today from us, it's a 2019 Ram 1500 Rebel, but the off the grid concept, we, we included the tent, the fridge, the stove, things like that, so folks can go and buy that stuff today, it's just our version of what we see. If traditional sedan transportation is more your style, then Hyundai's hybrid version of the newest Sonata might have some appeal. Or if performance and street racing speaks to you, then Honda's latest R version of the Civic should get your heart pumping. Toyota, which has a presence in nearly every segment of the mobility market, played to the local crowd with its variation on trucks and unveiling the XSC version of the redesigned Highlander crossover. For the record, the Highlander is now as large as what used to be referred to as full-size SUVs. The Volkswagen brand is squeezing two more models out of its full-size Atlas. One seats up to seven passengers, and the other only has two rows accommodating five. At the same time, the global automaker recognizes that electric vehicles should become more prominent in a few years. I think that we will reach the tipping point when EVs begin to be uh, a cost competitive with a similarly sized and similarly performanced uh, internal crossover vehicle. Then the real sales job will be selling the public on making the changeover. I'm Greg Morris.